Hey guys, Joel Seepin here. In today's video, I want to go over bottoms up exercises. And if you're unfamiliar with bottoms up movements, it's pretty simple. It's typically done with something like a kettlebell. And instead of having the load or the bell hanging below the handle, you'll flip it up so that the bell or the load is actually above the handle in the hand. And what that does creates a very unstable position. It really forces the lifter to centrate that glenohumeral joint into the optimal slot. And it really forces good scapular stability and control of that shoulder joint. If you don't stabilize it, these exercises feel almost impossible. So it really teaches good uh, mechanics and pressing mechanics or whatever variation of the uh, bottoms up movement that you've performed. I'm going to be going over a lot of different, um, different movements that you can do with bottoms up exercises. So uh, that'll be for some of the other videos. But uh, bottoms up movements, they don't have to be confined just to kettlebells. You can do them with something like an iron grip style plate. They work really well. In fact, they're a little bit more difficult because of how tall they are. You can also use bumper plates. Uh, bumper plates are extremely difficult because there's very little room to pinch. Okay, and uh, again, a lot of grip strength on something like that. And similarly, you can use a hex style dumbbell. Um, this is just a 15, but if I had something like a 20 or 25, you would see that as I'm pressing this, it's very tough to stabilize, very unstable. You really have to lock it in. A lot of finger grip activation, a lot of pinching strength involved for that. Whereas something like the kettlebell or the iron grip style plate, it's a little bit more uh, crushing grip strength. You really have to crush that handle hard to lock it in. The other thing that I want to go over here is the technique that you should use for bottoms up movements, especially overhead exercises, which actually does make up the majority of bottoms up exercises. Um, there's this kind of common theory out right now that you don't want to get too much extension because it causes the abs to protrude and it's not a good position and you want to make sure you keep everything locked in here. Um, and I'm just going to tell you right now, that is a dysfunctional position. Um, I'm not going to get too much into the details, but if you try to do any bottoms up exercise with any significant load and you don't get good thoracic extension, okay, it's going to feel impossible. You can try all day long. You're just not going to be able to do it well. So what we want to do, like I said, you want to get good thoracic extension. I think what people are confusing thoracic extension with is lumbar extension and uh, a loose core or weak core muscles. So what we want to do is make sure the stomach is pulled in, but we're still getting that good thoracic extension here, okay? We're getting that good T-spine position, and it requires good T-spine mobility. And all I mean by that is the top third of my spine from about here up extends back, okay? While keeping my hips and my low back in the same position without letting my abs get loose. So again, what it looks like is this. Notice how I'm getting that big chest, but my stomach's pulled in. I'm not doing this. That's where we run into issues. Right there, that's giving me that best position, okay? Right there, okay? That creates a good slot. I can stack everything on top of each other. It's very stable. If you don't do that, you will have extreme difficulty being able to do any of these well. Um, and it really isn't just, it's not going to happen, okay? So make sure you get that good thoracic extension regardless of what you've heard out there. Um, but keep the abs tight at the same time. So. Um, I think that's all I want to go over in this video, but like I said, in the other series, I'll be going over other exercises that you can do with that bottoms up variation. So stay tuned for those, all right? Thanks.